had a, a lot of PowerPoints and I didn't want to kill too many more kittens, so I want to have two slides um, on, on my talk. Um, when I will ask, because I only have two slides, most of this will be live, or I'll try to do it live, I hope, um, is if you could keep the use of the internet down while I'm talking, so that hopefully it will give me enough speed. I, if you haven't noticed, I tend to have a sense of humor about things. Um, the other sense of humor is the way my group works is I'm the old fogey who comes to meetings like this and gives talks because they humor me by allowing that. But what you're going to see is the work of some very bright people. They're leading through it. They fully box science and ASA as a part of sciences associates. You'll see some tools that we've been developing with them. So if you like what you see, they're the bright people. If you don't like what you see, that's me, because I'm the bogey that comes here. Um, so um, people who work with me know that I'm a real fan of it. I don't know if you've seen the iPad commercials, the videos. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron's laughing, because I mentioned this in the car. And, and what I like about them is that they're both realistic, and they capture moments that are important to you. And, the mess, and they tell a story. They don't tell you about the product. They tell a story, and the story they tell you is how they're going to transform these moments. Well, I don't have Peter Coyote's voice, and I certainly don't have the good looks of the people on it. And the people driving down with me were supposed to provide the pastel lights and the, uh, and the background piano, and they clearly failed miserably on that. So I don't have any of that. But I hope what we will show you is some transformation of how you deal with data and in two ways. One, how you bring it into your work and distribute it, and two, how you show your work to the world. And so I hope I have time to do both. And if you think about bringing environmental, if you want to really look at an ecosystem approach, what you used to have to do is like one certain data, I have to go website to website. Suppose I had a, a tag animal tag a few times. There'd be like one file for each day, so I could download every single effing file, right? And then there'd be five different sites, and they'd all be in different formats, and the time would be different, and, the, um, and everything would be different. And I have to figure out how to read that into my program, and that's the thing. And then, and then I have tag number two, and that's a different time, and I have to go back and repeat that whole process, right? And it sure would be nice if I could just get the data. Okay. So let's kill this. I usually run this in real time, but I think this is a short on time. Um, I ran this at lunch. Uh, it takes a few minutes. I can do it live. But I had on my computer two tracks of sharks, and I was interested in getting the um, data along them, like in the map lab. So there's sh um, track one. And you notice that, of course, the biological data is always has to be on my computer because it's not available. Big, um, big. There's the track number two. The coloring just shows one quarter. And right in MATLAB, I was able to get a histogram of the um, environmental conditions and five different variables. All this data was remote. None of the environmental data was on my computer. But if you look now, the data is actually sitting there. So I not only was able to do the image, but I had the actual data that was downloaded there. It was all done remotely. If you don't believe me, you can. This is all due to Dave Foley, the script, but you can see the output as it got downloaded. Um, so now all of a sudden, instead of having to do that whole process, I can just bring it right in. And in fact, the maps that were shown, I don't have this part of this talk. If there's time later, just I could show you in about 30 seconds, I can reproduce that Cal Coffee map with the libel amounts and a satellite image on, on it right into my computer, okay, even though none of the data is sitting on my computer. So that's what makes this happen, what makes the ability to do this is three things. First of all, the willingness to have the data available, <coughs> like all the biological data, right? Um, and you, if you notice the, um, the environmental side, they, they do a lot of work too to make the data. But they don't go, it's my data and you can't have it, the data's available. Um, the second thing that makes it work is the data follows standards in terms of semantic metadata. The semantic data is the stuff that makes me understand what's in that file. So lat and long and time are done standard ways with standard names. Everything else has a standard name that's used. So when I get that information, I can understand it. And the third thing is it's done through a web service, not a web page. There's a big difference. 
a service, particularly the service we use, are defined totally by the URL, and anything that can send the URL and receive a file can use it. And so those are the things that make it all work. And the other thing about a service is you don't know anything about what's behind that service. How the data is stored, where it's stored, they could change how it's stored. The service doesn't change, they could totally change. In fact, we've changed how some of our data is stored, and you don't know that, you still just get it the same way. So let's clear this because we'll come back. Let's look a little, a little bit under the hood. Okay, what's underneath this is a service called Erdap. And even though you see a web page and you may or may not like the web page, this web page itself is just a web page that uses the service. And I'll show you that. And one nice thing about the service is I can do, for example, a search. So if I'm interested in a blended SST, it will give me the links to the blended SST, but what I want to do is really convince you that it's nothing to do with those web pages. So let's start a new tab. I'll put the URL here, so I'm not at that thing. And there's the same result. It has nothing to do with that web page. Okay. Um, to save some time, I've already said here is if I want to get that blended SST, it's off the west coast here. I can get it in all sorts of file types. Um, so we can just visualize it. Let's get a, an image. Okay. We just extract it remotely. Okay, that image. We had, okay. But I really again want to convince you that it has nothing to do with those web pages. So let's go here, do this one again, and I'll put in that URL. And there's the image. So, and the image is being generated on the fly. It's being generated from the data, so I can actually customize this image, things like that. Okay, but I can do even more. Um, if you look at this little ender here, suppose I wanted this as a, a MATLAB file. Um, oops. I just do .mat. Oops, don't type very well. And so this, I was wondering whether, was going, whether I'd be able to stand and talk and think and work at the computer at the same time. It's a, yeah. Okay, if you can see my download, it's downloading a MATLAB file right now. Okay. Um, so you, it, it's all just done by a URL. If I wanted, for example, a KML file, all I have to do is go here and do KML. KML. Now, normally in a lot of computers, that would just pop up Google Earth. I block anything from popping up. Um, so let's see what I can find it. There it is. So now you begin to see the power of services. I didn't have to go to any web page. I'm just pulling this down. I'm doing this over the internet. Okay, I'm just reading in the applications. Um, it, it just works. Okay. Like that, let's go back to MacLab. And I have a little thing here. I'm going to convince you it's really quite simple. The format of what it takes. I'm not sure how big this is, but this is a link that just has the same URL as what I was doing before. And then I need a couple lines, and we'll just see whether I can read that same thing in the map line. Okay. And this is using the same service, and there's the data. Let's see whether the figure came up. No, let me get that part of the script. So I brought it in, I have the data sitting in my MATLAB thing, and there's a figure done off it that can get you with that. If I wanted to do a fancier script. Oops. Yeah, there's a fancier one using it now. So, and actually the first thing I showed you, the way that works is Dave Foley of our group has written a bunch of scripts called Extractomatics. And one of them will do, um, give a array of that long. 
and the parameter one, you know, pulling that parameter along the line of the array. One will do a box, right there, one will do a polygon, and it works in MATLAB and R. You don't need to know anything about the protocol, you just feed it the information you want, it pulls in the environmental data right into the app. So you never leave the app. So, so this gives you an idea of why we like it. But suppose you, you don't like scripts and you'd like still being able to um, pull things into applications but using a GUI. We developed with ASA a product called the Environmental Data Connector. It runs in ArcGIS, in MATLAB, in R, and in Excel. And I don't have ArcGIS on this because this is a Mac, but I do have a video made by my friend Kelly Nee who works for ASA. And we'll quickly look at um, her access. This can pop up and see it being called in this plan. So here she started the environmental data connector, and she tells it the URL to go to. And she sees the catalog of the data, the remote data, which you know it's like her desktop. And when she selects it, she can actually see um, metadata about the data. And it's all running in R. We'll skip along, and when it comes up, you get this interface to zoom in to the location you want. And the time is set down there. Down on the bottom, you can set time in the variable. And we'll just skip along. And here she brought in wind vectors. Okay, then she went to a second site, and we'll go through quickly. Here's again the um, And here she brought in. SST on top of the wind factors, and this has time too, and there's a special time tool that we built to go with it. Here she goes to a service that gets data buoys, and you can see it shows you where all the data buoys are, and you can check that, and you can read in the data buoys. And she can find the time series. It's all within ARC, but the same thing can be done in that lab. And here she brings in some transect data from the Channel Islands. Okay. So that shows you on um, this tool. The tool is freely available. It's from the ASA site or from us. Okay, then they're quickly switched on the other side. Okay, making data available. I don't know how many of you have originally seen the old top page. Um, it shows the tracks and the environmental. This was done quite a few years ago, and it was actually pre-generated. So even though you see the environment and the tracks, you can select on it, whatever, it didn't have as much flexibility. But we know how to do things better. So this is the new GTOP page. When you get it, you can choose. This is all using services, by the way. So here you see a web page using the same services. I just used the MATLAB and the web and everything else. It's all the same data services getting the data. and. Um, What's nice is, for example, I changed it, so I've pre-done this, I changed it to be elf and seal. If it's, it shows me info about the elf and seal, it read that real time. Okay? And not only that, I can download it, thing, or if I wanted to add satellite data, she generates the image and it's added to it. I hope, I should have tested this one, there it is. Okay, I add it to it. In fact, if I don't like the, I can rescale the color if I want to get more detail on it. Because we, we're generating the images on the fly, so I can rescale it, and she goes out and gets the data and generates it on the fly. And it does allow some data day low. It doesn't have a service yet. They actually do have the service underneath, but they haven't made it public. This is the usual problem. Um, top kept on claiming after CML ended that, oh, yeah, the data will be available, the data will be available. Um, you notice all the environmental data is freely available. It can be used. That can't be said of the um, biological data. And the environmental data put in the hard work, the people put in the hard work of developing the standards, developing the protocols so that you can do this and can understand it and making the data available. And you can see the power of it um, in, in all, both getting in the data and getting out the data to the public. And this, by the way, is a public site, the one I'm showing you. And you can 
can zoom in, you can change the time, and you can select tracks and zoom in on that. There's, there's endless amount of stuff that you can do. So that's my presentation.